New Year, New Mercies, just a few verses here today from Lamentations. I want to begin by giving a little context here. In verse 21, that's where we're going to pick up this journey. I call this Lamentation Hope. Lamentation Hope. We find ourselves in this book, and uh, the entire book is, is really a lament of Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He was called by God uh, as a, a, before he was born, appointed by God for this ministry. He has been ministering now 40 years, likely, but before he writes this book. And the setting of this book, we believe, takes place right around 586 B.C. This is a devastating time for Israel's history. He has been calling Israel to repent, to turn from their sins, their hardness of heart, to come back to the Lord. And they have not. They have not. And exactly what he has prophesied is coming to pass. Jerusalem is thrown down by the Babylonians. Nebuchadnezzar destroys the most glorious work of Solomon. The temple is sacked. And Jeremiah is weeping under the judgment of God upon a sinful people. It's a righteous judgment because the sinful people have sinned against God. When we sin, let's be clear, our sin is chiefly and foremost against God. That's why it's such a big deal. Yes, we sin against one another, and that sin too is against God because it is a breach of His law and His character. God is right and good to punish sin. It's righteous judgments against a sinful people, a hard-hearted people who know better, who've been called out of their sin, and yet they continue in it. They disregarded the prophet's call. Listen to how Lamentations chapter 3 begins. It's really amazing. In fact, the first 20 verses of Lamentations 3 kind of continue like this. I am the man, Jeremiah says, who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. Now, who is he talking about? He's talking about God. This is the wrath of God, his rod of wrath. And it says now that Jeremiah, not just the people, but Jeremiah himself has felt this, has been impacted by the wrath of God. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Surely against me he turns his hand again and again the whole day long. He goes on to describe how he feels like God has taken his teeth and ground them into the gravel. 20 verses of this, and that continues from chapters 1 and 2 into chapter 3 until we reach verse 21 where there's a change. The prophet looks around and all he sees is darkness. He, he feels the wrath of God, the righteous wrath of God. He sees all of God's indignation against sin. And yet all of a sudden in the middle of this book of lament, this is mind-blowing, these verses meet us just like the heart of Job, right in the middle of suffering and judgment, come some of the most incredible verses in the Bible. Hope in the midst of judgment, that is God's covenant love. God is a promise keeper. He is faithful to His covenant. He will not fail to uphold His word. And so in the midst of this judgment, Jeremiah looks and he says, I know it's bleak. The temple is thrown down. Look at their hauling off God's people. But I know this is not the final word. I know this won't be a final end of your people because you have promised. And you're a promise-keeping God. And so he appeals to the covenant love of God. And that is the source of his hope. Listen to his words. This I call to mind and therefore... I have hope. Now, this is not what he's just been saying, right? That's the reality that he's living in. He's, he sees fire. He sees judgment. And in the middle of that, he locks eyes with the Lord. What he's about to say is what he's calling to mind. And it is the basis of his hope. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Friends, we are not in 
near as dire situation as Jeremiah found himself. But we live in troubled times. As I look back over the major news stories of 2022, <laughs> it was kind of bleak. It, you know, it wasn't real uplifting uh, an experience. Now, I would say as we look back over 2022, not as bad as 2021, categorically, you know, on, on world stage, although uh, the Ukrainians probably would disagree, wouldn't they? There's been some horrific things that have happened around the world. 2021, 2020 was even crazier in some ways, but as we anticipate 2023, who here in this room can say that that is not their final year? Who, who, who can say that 2023 won't bring absolute devastation upon our lives? Who, who are we to say that, that the normal we've experienced basically in 2022 won't be completely upside down in this next year? None of us know what this year will bring. And it's easy for us to enter into a year, even on a day like today when there's parades and, and football and celebrations, it's easy for us to enter in with, with just this, this kind of subtle, I don't know, I, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm a little hesitant to go into this year. Can I dip my toe in the water first and just feel how this is going to... You ever find yourself there? Where do we look for hope in a dark world that just seems to be spiraling deeper and deeper? Let's take our cue from Jeremiah the prophet who lived in times far worse than ours. Listen to what he does. He points to the loyal love and endless mercy of God. Verse 22 of Lamentations 3. The steadfast love of the Lord, he says, it never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. You see what he's doing? He's speaking to his own heart what is true of God. What is true. Not just by way of his experience, but what is fact. It is true. It is truth with a capital T. Because God has promised he knows it to be true even when he doesn't feel it to be true. He's preaching a sermon to his heart. Listen here, heart. You need to hope. Hope. Where, where are you going to find this hope? Hope in God. Well, why? Because this is who he is. This is what's he, what he's like. This is what he's promised. This is true for us in 2023. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Two different... Um, but connected things being brought forward here. Two beautiful words. Chesed is the first Hebrew word. It's a, a steadfast, faithful, loyal love. It's a love that is, is, is going to be counted upon. When God says, I set my love upon you, you can guarantee that he will not fail in that promise. You're his. He will love you. He will love you even when you don't feel like this is his love. It is his love. It's his love. It's steadfast. It's fixed. It's firm. It's, it's, it's unshakable. It's faithful. Dependable. It's loyal. And it's love. It's love. It's a love that's bigger than any of our categories could fit. It's a love that doesn't fit the world of wimpy Christendom that would say God's love must fit all of my list, right? All of my agendas, all of the things that I want or the comforts that I prefer or the timing that I would choose. No, it's a love bigger than that. It's a faithful, loyal, holy love. The second word is this is a fun one to say. Rakamim. Okay, you got to roll that R. Kids, you with me? Let's, let's do this on three. One, two, three. Rakamim. It's fun. It's a comprehensive word. I got this from MacArthur as his 
definition built this out. It's spectacular. It encompasses all these things. Think of this. Love, grace, mercy, goodness, forgiveness, truth, compassion, and faithfulness. If this were a blender, put them all in and hit blend. That's all wrapped up in this word in your Bible, mercies, or um, compassions, New American Standard. His compassions. You feel the heart involved in that? It's not just action. It's love. It's, it's feeling. It's God on display, in action, in your life. His faithful, loyal, steadfast love and His mercies. They never end. They never end. Loyal love and tender compassions. This is the reality for you today, Christian. It is the reality for you this year, Christian, come what may. Come what may. And it is your reality through all eternity. Because God is faithful. And you can count on it. Why do we receive this? Well, grace. (laughs) We don't deserve it. We certainly haven't earned it. This is, this is the work of God. Hmm. Tracks back to the gospel, doesn't it? We don't deserve this as rebels and sinners, as haters of God, those who invite His wrath. We don't deserve No one on this earth has ever deserved the love of God poured out in this way. But God, in His great love, as we just rehearsed through in the Lord's Supper, He takes the initiative and He says, I I set my love upon you and you and you and I save you from your sins and I pull you from the dark and I make you mine and I forgive you and I cleanse you and I call you to walk in my way and be part of my family forever. You are mine. You are loved forever. Steadfast, loyal, mercies that never end. Do you know this today, my friends? Most of you I know, some of your your faces are new here this morning, and I just want to say, listen, if you have never experienced the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, today could be the day you walk into this love. Today could be the day that you are born again, forgiven of your sins. We call you to... Run to Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins. Trust in Him and Him alone. Confess your sins and turn to Christ and be forgiven. Believe upon Him and you will be saved. And you will know this love. It's a love that God set upon me from eternity past and then realized in my life when I was only five years old. He lit my heart ablaze. All of grace. It was His work. It's a love that I've walked in since that point every day and a love I will know through all eternity. Gospel-rooted mercies. Psalm 103, 13, As a father shows compassion to his children, so Yahweh shows compassion to those who fear Him. This is a love A covenant love, a special love. This is not the love that God shows common to the ends of the earth when the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. That is His his common goodness and grace to all, right? The sun shines and, and, and He withholds His wrath and gives another day of grace to, to hear the gospel in turn. But for His chosen, there is a fatherly love, a special covenant love for his children. And his children are those who fear him. It is a compassion, a love of the heart. It goes on to say, for he knows our frame. He knows that we are but dust. He knows we're weak. He knows we're frail. He knows we're fickle-hearted people so easily distracted and wandering into sin. And his mercies are new every morning. You could say it this way, if it wasn't for His mercy, things would be far worse, far worse than they are today. It is an endless river of mercies. Note that 
His mercies never come to an end. God will never reach the end of his mercy with you and say, well, Christian, listen, yeah, I put up with you for like this long and that is it. I am sick of it and that's all you get. No more mercy for you. It's going to be a rough year. No, that, that'll never happen. His mercy never runs out because the cross was so potent. All of your sins, past, present, and future, have been paid in full and nailed to Jesus Christ on the cross. It's an endless river of mercies and compassions and love and kindness. I like how Paul Tripp said it. Each day we taste of these mercies in different ways. Some days we wake up and the mercy is new and it's an awe-inspiring mercy. We see him. Some days we wake up and it's a rebuking mercy. God calls us out in our sin and rebukes us in his love. That is his kindness. You realize that? To call us out of our sin and, and to step on our toes when we wander off the path. Sometimes it's a strengthening mercy when we're weak, when we're exhausted, when we're tired. He meets us and he lifts up our head. A hope-giving mercy, when you look around and it just feels bleak, he'll meet you with a word of hope and encouragement from his word. A heart-exposing mercy, sometimes he loves us enough to pull back the veil. When we look inward, sometimes we, we dress things up to make them look better than they are, and God will, in his mercy, pull back the veil and say, there's work to do. Let's get to work. There's sin to address. Sometimes it's rescuing mercies. In the moment, we cry out, Lord, help us. Save us. We need you. And he comes with incredible rescue. Sometimes it's transforming mercies. He moves us in a way that we could not move ourselves. We cry out, Lord, I want to grow. I am so sick of struggling with this or battling this or being stuck in this place. Help me grow. And he meets us with mercy and power. Every day, forgiving mercies. We are sinners, my friends. Justified sinners. Similustus et peccator. We are sinners and yet forgiven. And each day, as we walk in the gospel, we breathe the air of that forgiveness and we confess our sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us each day. Forgiving mercies, they never come to an end. Provision-making mercies. They give us this day our daily bread, our daily bread. His mercies are new every morning. Uncomfortable mercies. God knows that oftentimes our greatest idols deal with comfort. I like, I like a predictable day. I like to, to, to set a plan and then have the plan go as I planned. And, and, and all of a sudden there's a leak in my roof. And I'm like, wait a second, that's not what I had my day planned for. And that happened to me this week. I, I went out on the back porch. Thankfully it was not in the house, but it was coming through the roof at a place that's not supposed to come through the roof. And water was pouring down just behind our fridge on the outside of the wall, under the roof. And I was struck as I had been studying this. You know what the Lord did? It was a mercy. He stirred my heart to say, well, here's a new problem. <laughs> and right on the tail of that, look for new mercy. Look for new mercy. Called the builder who built our house. He said, yeah, you got a five-year warranty on that roof. Get a hold of the builder. By the end of the day, the builder or the roofer was there, and they had the roof fixed by noon the next day. New mercy. I didn't even know we had that. Who did that? God did that. Why the leak? For new mercy. That's why. He ordained that leak to display his provision of mercy. Hmm. Glory revealing mercies. Oh, how often we run into these moments where we see his glory, we just taste of his absolute, breathtaking splendor. And we say, wow, look at you, God. Truth illumining mercies. We open our Bibles in the morning. Oh, friends, come to the Word. Come and eat daily 
mercies, new mercies each day. You will never finish exhausting the living Word of God. Today is the day to say, oh God, this year, this year, even more than last year, this year, I want to eat your Word daily. I want to live in your Word. Feed upon your Word. Courage, giving mercies. The list can go on. Really, it's, it's, it's an unending list of mercies. A glorious display of God's heart for you, His child. Now, verse 23 is my favorite. This is where I was drawn to this passage. As I spun this, this reality around, it's surprising and sufficient mercy. Surprising and sufficient mercy. Verse 23 his mercies never come to end, so that's 22. They are, his mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now, I got stuck on this because, um, well, how does that work? How, how can both of those things be true? Verse 22, his, his mercies never come to an end, and then, and, well, and then it says they're new every morning. So how can something constant, something that never ends, be new? How does that work? And, and that's important for us to consider. The reality is, is that the, the whole emphasis is that, that it's, they never wear out. It's steadfast. It's fixed. It's, it's, it's a reality for your life forever. So how can it be new in the morning? How can he renew his mercy? This is what I came up with and. At least, I think in part, this would be the answer. Each day brings us fresh experiences of God's moment-specific mercies. Every day is a new opportunity for God to tune His mercies and show you His heart. Okay, so moment-specific. It's not just new in the morning. It's new now. And it's new now. You see what happened? Every moment is the creation of God who upholds all things through Jesus Christ by the word of his power. Every moment is new. Every moment is ordained. Every moment is fulfilling the word of God. Therefore, every moment brings a new, purposed, ordained display of God's mercy. His kindness, His love. The mercy that you needed yesterday is different than the mercy that you need today. See what God is saying there? He doesn't just blindly portion out mercy. It's just not categorically. While it is true that His mercy is over all He has made, it is specific for His children and specific to the situation and the need in the moment you find yourself in. So it's, it's true to say both His mercy is new every, mo every, every morning, but you can also say it, it's new every moment. And you can certainly say His mercy is new every year. You start a new year. It's new. One of the occupations of the believer is to catch the display of His mercy as we experience it afresh and new and worship, to be in awe that God in sovereign mercy could meet us in such a way with such great love. New trial, new mercy. New trial, new mercy. So 2023, my friends, I guarantee you this. This is true for everyone in this room. It will inevitably, even possibly today, it will bring new trials. They will come. It's quite likely but that by the end of this next year, some of you won't be here. You might be in glory. It's quite likely some of you who experience health issues today may have a different scenario by the end of the year. You may, you may have no longer the health issues. And some of you who are healthy here today may indeed find by the end of this next year that you are not healthy. But what is true and certain is this. There is mercy, sufficient, 
for all that we will meet in 2023. Whether it be political issues, global catastrophes, surprises in the doctor's office, whether it be great challenges of life and death, whether it be small little daily challenges, like trying to get the kids ready for school on time and get out the door. Every day is a day of new mercy, tailor-made to bless your heart from the heart of God. That's spectacular. And, and Jeremiah says this as the Babylonians are hauling people off and blood is flowing in through the streets of Jerusalem and the temple of Solomon is torn down. He says this with confidence. If he can say that, so can we. So can we. Same God. New displays of mercy. Hmm. We need this at the front of a year. We need this at the front of a day, every day. Preach this to your heart, believer. This is equipping. This is hope establishing living in the truth of God's Word. Romans 8, 28, my favorite uh, translation of this is the New American Standard. We know that God causes, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. That's true of every single moment of 2023 for you, believer. That's true. It's true of your day. It's true of your week. It's true of your eternity. Nothing can change that. Nothing. No one can change that. Satan himself can't interfere with that reality, and that's true of your life. So, I mean, what do you conclude what then shall we fear? Right? What, who shall we fear? What can separate us from his love? Nothing. Nothing. I think of the Israelites in the desert. I think this is a pointer here of Jeremiah. Just like they woke up every morning and they went out and they gathered that sweet and sustaining mercy of God called manna, a gift from his hand for the day. Remember this? You can't add to your basket more than you need for the day. It's daily bread. We have from our God the same thing on a spiritual level that meets us, his children, every day. He gives exactly what we need. And one of the primary ways he provides it for us is through his word as we come to eat. Daily bread. I love how it finishes in verse 23, a statement that changes in, in, in this. It's fascinating. He's describing God, talking about how God works and what he does, and now all of a sudden he's talking to God. You see what happened here? Jeremiah went from re reclaiming his hope and pointing the way to his heart and telling what is true about God to worshiping God. Now his attention is upward. That's where his eyes need to be anyway. Fix your eyes, and now all of a sudden, Jeremiah, the prophet, in the midst of all of the chaos, he looks, eyes with the Lord himself, and he says, Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. These are personal mercies. This is not just generic spread across. This is a, a relational mercy that God gives. This is his goal in his mercy, that we get God. That, that as he shows his heart, as he gives these mercies, that we see him and we stop and say, wow, that leak pointed me to you, Lord. Thank you. I tasted of you. What will that look like today? This is a project. It's an opportunity. It's, it's a fun way to go through your day. What new mercy will I see today? How about this year? What new mercy will I see this year? As we rehearse this past year, what new mercies have we tasted of this past year as we look back? How has he shown himself? How has he given himself? And how can we respond in worship? Great is your faithfulness. The great song, Great is Your Faithfulness, is 
written straight out of these verses. We're going to close today by singing that song. A response this morning. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow goes the song. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Where's that coming from? Morning by morning, new mercies I see. You see his, his goal as he goes through his morning and his day? Catch it, note it, and glorify God. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. It's a worship that it lands us in. So three things to call us to as we move into this day and into this new year. Number one, discover His mercies new for you, Christian. Specifically, tailor-made, momentary, tailor-made mercies for you. Discover them and depend upon them. We need them. They're mercies. And then delight in God. Lock eyes with Him and thank Him. Adore Him. Worship Him. The God who holds us and keeps us and loves us forever. Let's pray. Oh, Father, what an incredible Father You are. Oh, how You love us. We thank You for Your steadfast love. It is loyal. It is fixed. It is undeserved. And yet, it is the defining reality of our lives, especially as we consider the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that you sent your Son and did what we could not do, accomplish our salvation through Jesus. Thank you for your steadfast love and, oh Lord, your tender compassions, your mercies that never come to an end, that are new every moment and every morning and every new year. Great is your faithfulness, O God. We worship you. We delight in you, your children. Oh, Father, be glorified in our lives as we count your mercies and point others to the display of your goodness and mercy each day. We thank you for our confidence in this life and the next. What shall separate us from this kind of love? Nothing. Nothing. You are ours forever, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.